Now, we need to understand a few things about how God has made us. One of the things I've learned is something called Hebb's axiom. Hebb's axiom says this, neurons that fire together wire together. What's a neuron, preacher? Neurons are the cells in our brain. And when we do things, they shoot this little electric charge back and forth between each other. And when we do that same thing the next day, those same neurons shoot some more charges and they strengthen their bond. Do that same thing the next day, and those neurons strengthen those charges. They shoot that electric signal again and the, the bond strengthens. You know, so you pick up that first cigarette. A little while later, you want another one. It's not just the nicotine. There are pathways in your brain that are appearing that weren't there a few days ago. And in a couple of weeks, after a couple more packs, those pathways will be a lot stronger. And you'll be addicted. And you'll feel like there is a power at work in your life that you cannot escape. It's just one example. There are infinite examples of how those kinds of things work. Works that way with our phones, actually, also. You get up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? After six months of grabbing a cell phone the first time, the first thing you do, imagine how strong those bonds are between those neurons in your brain. Is this healthy? Probably not. Is it reality? Absolutely. And so there's this dynamic that we see in Paul where there are sins, that we, there are things we do and we commit them and we're culpable for that and we're complicit, but the more we do it, the more it becomes a power in our life. And Paul wasn't a neuroscientist and I'm not a neuroscientist, but there's an analogy here where if we give ourselves to certain destructive behaviors, whatever they are, like pick anything on the list, whether it's the big bad ones or the little ones, you know, like just mouthing off to your mom and your dad, whatever it is, right? Mom and dad probably don't think that's little, but, uh, you know, some, other, some people may. Whatever they are, if it's a habit, if it's a practice continuing and continuing, my body actually changes to reinforce those habits. And sin isn't just a spiritual reality that's, that doesn't have any relation to my brain or my body or my arms and legs and my neurons and my all of those things. Sin becomes this deeply ingrained part of my biology and I feel its force. Try it sometime. Next time you are inclined to spend way more time than is holy on a device. Put it down for an hour. I mean, what? just take a second and think about this for a minute. We're going to talk more about electronics and devices in weeks three, I think. But I just want to kind of help us start thinking through this, right? Does anyone think it's a good idea to spend eight hours a day looking at a screen? Like, we do, don't we? Whether it's a TV, whether it's a computer, sometimes it's at work, we get off work, we like, you know, we're driving. I mean, how many times are you driving down the road and you see somebody in their car? You know, like, clearly that's not safe or healthy. Right? But when you're addicted, you do things that are irrational. Right? And so, so just take something that, it's not, and is it sinful to have a cell phone? Of course not, right? Mine's over there. I don't think it is anyway. Maybe. I, but just, here's this thing, it's in our lives and it's always in our lives. And it has us in its grip, and we don't even notice it most of the time. Like, just try to cut it off for a couple of hours this afternoon and see what happens. And when you do, pay attention to how you feel. Or if you're sitting at lunch with your family, and maybe it's on, uh, you know, it's probably on the table with you. Stick it on the coffee table or in another room, and when you hear it buzz, don't go get it for 15 minutes. Point made, right? And then, during that 15 minutes, pay attention to how you feel. You will feel anxiety. I wonder what somebody liked. It's in my new profile picture. We can make it holy. Maybe you shared the sermon and somebody commented on it. That's good, right? You got to go see what they said about the sermon or something, you know? If it's a good thing, you know? This one, probably it's going to be all bad. Thumbs down, right? But like, pay attention to how you feel. I really want to know. I really want to see that update. Push notifications. It's buzzing at me. My phone is blowing. Like, you take 15 minutes, you'll probably have your whole little, little bar at the top will be full. Pay attention to how you feel. And then ask yourself, 
Like, is this how God designed me to live my life? Is this healthy? Is this a good thing? My phone is an incredible tool. I miss far fewer appointments now than I did before I had one. Good tool, really helpful, and that's great, as long as the danger can be mitigated. Sin is a, pow- a, sin is a practice that I'm complicit in. I'm going to give myself to this thing, whatever it is, whether it's a phone, whether it's covetousness, whether it's gossip, I'm going to give myself to it. And I'm going to give myself to it later today, and then I'm going to give myself to it tomorrow, and then I'm going to give myself to it again and again and again and again, and before you know it, I'll be hooked, and I'll feel the power of that thing acting in my body. And I'll discover in my experience that sin is not just something I do, it's a power I obey. Is it worse than you thought? Probably so. There's good news, friends. Good news comes in Romans 5. You hear about sin, the power again, in verse 21. Just as sin exercised dominion, power, ruler, rulership, authority. That's what that word dominion means. Just as sin exercised authority in death. Here's the good news. Where sin increased grace abounded all the more. My sins, they are many. His mercy is more. Where sin increased, grace super abounded. You remember that later today when you're saying no to whatever it is and that anxiety is rising in your chest. You remember that where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. And as bad as it is, and as nasty as it is, and as all-encompassing as it is, God in his kindness has not given up on us. My heart is darker than any of us have begun to imagine, and yours is too. And the light and the love of Jesus' perfect grace is brighter than any of our darkness. And we need to be thinking about how bad it is for us. And we can go days, weeks perhaps, without stopping to consider how far we have fallen and how deeply our depravity runs. And we can just zone out on those things because they're right there. And we can scroll and pass the time and we don't have to think about what's doing to us and how, how, how detached we are and how unengaged we are. We don't have to think about those things and we can just, we can just self-medicate in that way Or we can stop and we can open the Scriptures and we can hear what God has to say about our hearts and how bad it's gone off the rails and what a mess we've made of it. And then in that moment of just this depth of darkness, we can see the absolute beauty of His perfect love break through like the sunrise over a dark morning comes and illumines the day and brings warmth and brings wholeness. Where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. 